The Unseen Shadows A True High School Horror Story Introduction High school is often romanticized as a time of self-discovery, academic growth, and budding friendships. For many, it's a period of their lives filled with fond memories and valuable life lessons. However, for some high school can also be a place of unseen horrors and enduring scars. This is the story of Sarah Mitchell, a high school student who faced a nightmare that was all too real and deeply disturbing, hidden in the shadows of an ordinary American high school. Sarah's Background Sarah Mitchell was an ordinary teenager attending Ridgewood High, a school known for its rigorous academic program and competitive sports teams. A diligent student and an avid reader, Sarah had a close-knit group of friends and a supportive family. She excelled in her studies, participated in the school's debate team, and dreamed of becoming a lawyer one day. Her future seemed bright and promising, but behind the facade of normalcy, an insidious darkness was lurking. The beginning of the nightmare. The first signs of trouble appeared during Sarah's sophomore year. One of her classmates, Jason Thompson, started showing an unusual interest in her. At first, Jason's attention seemed harmless. He would ask for help with homework, join her group during lunch, and compliment her on her academic achievements. However, as the weeks passed, his behavior grew increasingly unsettling. Jason began to follow Sarah around the school, waiting outside her classes and showing up at places where she would hang out with her friends. Initially, Sarah dismissed these actions as mere coincidences. However, when Jason started sending her dozens of messages on social media and calling her late at night, she realized something was seriously wrong. Despite Sarah's clear discomfort and repeated requests for him to stop, Jason's behavior only escalated. Seeking help feeling threatened and unsafe, Sarah confided in her parents and school counselors. They advised her to block Jason on social media and avoid him whenever possible. The school administration assured her that they would address the issue. However, their actions were limited to a stern warning which did little to deter Jason. The situation worsened when Jason began spreading rumors about Sarah. He would tell other students that they were in a relationship, creating a web of lies that isolated Sarah from her peers. Her friends, unsure of what to believe, started to distance themselves from her. The once vibrant and confident Sarah became withdrawn and anxious. Her grades began to slip, and she dreaded going to school each day. The turning point. One evening, after a particularly stressful day at school, Sarah decided to take a walk in her neighborhood to clear her mind. She was halfway through her usual route when she noticed a familiar figure trailing behind her. It was Jason. Panic set in as she quickened her pace, hoping to lose him. But Jason kept up, and soon Sarah found herself cornered in a dimly lit alleyway. Jason confronted her demanding to know why she was avoiding him. His tone was aggressive, and his eyes were filled with a disturbing intensity. Sarah, trembling with fear, tried to reason with him, but her pleas fell on deaf ears. In that moment, she realized just how dangerous Jason had become. Fortunately, a neighbor heard the commotion and came to Sarah's aid, causing Jason to flee. Shaken and terrified, Sarah reported the incident to her parents and the police. This time, the authorities took immediate action. A restraining order was issued against Jason, and he was suspended from school pending further investigation. The Aftermath While the restraining order provided some relief, the psychological scars from Jason's harassment ran deep. Sarah struggled with anxiety and depression, finding it difficult to trust others. She started seeing a therapist, who helped her navigate through the trauma and regain some semblance of normalcy. The school community was shocked by the events that had unfolded. Many students and parents criticized the administration for their lack of adequate response and preventive measures. This led to a series of reforms at Ridgewood High, including the implementation of stricter anti-harassment policies and better support systems for students in distress. The Road to Recovery Sarah's journey to recovery was a long and arduous one. 
she gradually rebuilt her social life, reconnecting with old friends and making new ones who supported her through her struggles. Her academic performance improved, and she regained her passion for learning. Sarah also became an advocate for anti-bullying and mental health awareness, sharing her story to help others who might be facing similar situations. Her resilience and determination inspired many, and she became a symbol of strength and hope within her community. Reflection Sarah's experience is a stark reminder of the hidden horrors that can exist within the seemingly safe confines of a high school. It highlights the importance of vigilance, support, and timely intervention in preventing such incidents from escalating. While Sarah's story had a relatively positive outcome, not everyone is as fortunate. Many victims of harassment and bullying suffer in silence, their cries for help unheard. Conclusion The tale of Sarah Mitchell is a true horror story, not because of supernatural elements or ghostly apparitions, but because it reflects the very real and disturbing experiences that some students endure. It underscores the need for schools, parents, and communities to work together to create a safe and supportive environment for all students. By raising awareness and taking proactive measures, we can help ensure that no one else has to go through the nightmare that Sarah faced. High school should be a time of growth and opportunity, not fear and torment. Sarah's story serves as a powerful reminder that we must remain vigilant and compassionate, always ready to stand up against the unseen shadows that threaten the well-being of our young people. High School Disturbing True Horror Story The Shadows of Jefferson High Jefferson High School, a sprawling institution located in a quiet suburb, seemed like any other typical American high school. Its red brick buildings, well-manicured lawns, and bustling hallways filled with teenagers represented a microcosm of youthful exuberance. Yet, beneath its polished exterior, a harrowing true story unfolded, forever altering the lives of its students and faculty. In the fall of 2017, the school welcomed a new student, Emily Turner. Emily had moved from a neighboring state due to her father's job relocation. Shy and reserved, she had always found it difficult to fit in, and starting anew at Jefferson was a daunting prospect. However, Emily's quiet demeanor and excellent academic record soon drew the attention of her teachers, particularly Mrs. Fields, the school's guidance counselor. Mrs. Fields had been at Jefferson High for over two decades. She had a reputation for being both compassionate and insightful, often going the extra mile to support her students. When she first met Emily, she noticed the girl's anxiousness and decided to keep a close eye on her, offering regular counseling sessions to help her adjust. Despite Mrs. Field's efforts, Emily's behavior began to change subtly but noticeably. She started missing classes, her grades slipped, and she often seemed distracted or on edge. Concerned, Mrs. Fields arranged a meeting with Emily's parents, hoping to uncover any underlying issues. During the meeting, Mr. and Mrs. Turner seemed equally puzzled by their daughter's change in behavior. They revealed that Emily had always been a high achiever and that they had never encountered such issues before. They also mentioned that Emily had recently become very secretive and withdrawn at home, often locking herself in her room for hours. Mrs. Fields assured them that she would do everything in her power to support Emily, both academically and emotionally. As weeks passed, Emily's condition did not improve. She began isolating herself, avoiding eye contact, and showing signs of severe distress. One afternoon, Mrs. Fields received a call from Emily's mother, frantic and in tears. Emily had gone missing. She hadn't returned home from school, and her phone was switched off. The police were immediately notified, and a search was launched. The entire school was thrown into a state of panic. Rumors began to circulate, each more terrifying than the last. Some students claimed that Emily had been bullied, while others whispered about dark forces at play. The truth, however, was far more disturbing than anyone could have imagined. Two days later, Emily was found. She was hiding in an abandoned shed on the outskirts of town, visibly traumatized and barely coherent. 
The police took her to the hospital, where she was treated for dehydration and shock. When she was finally able to speak, the story she told sent chills down everyone's spine. Emily confessed that she had been lured into an online relationship with an older man who claimed to be a high school student from a nearby town. They had met through social media and over time, he had gained her trust, manipulating her into sharing personal details and photos. Eventually, he convinced her to meet in person, promising her a world of excitement and understanding that she felt was missing in her life. The man, however, was not who he claimed to be. He was a predator, using a false identity to exploit vulnerable teenagers. When Emily met him, he kidnapped her and held her captive in the shed, intending to use her for his own malicious purposes. Emily managed to escape when he left her alone to run an errand, seizing the opportunity to hide until she was found. The revelation rocked Jefferson High to its core. The community was outraged and demanded answers. How could this have happened under their watch? The school administration, local authorities, and parents united in their resolve to ensure such an incident never happened again. Mrs. Fields, devastated by the turn of events, dedicated herself to raising awareness about online safety and the dangers of internet predators. She organized workshops, bringing in experts to educate students and parents about the warning signs and preventative measures. The school also implemented stricter internet usage policies and provided more resources for mental health support. Emily's ordeal sparked a nationwide conversation about the hidden dangers lurking in the digital age. Media outlets picked up the story, using it as a case study to highlight the importance of cybersecurity and the need for vigilance. Emily, with her family's support, decided to speak out about her experience, hoping to prevent other teenagers from falling into the same trap. Over time, Emily's bravery helped her heal. She returned to Jefferson High, determined to finish her education and rebuild her life. Her story became a testament to the resilience of the human spirit and the power of community support. The school, though scared by the incident, emerged stronger and more united in its mission to protect and nurture its students. In the years that followed, Jefferson High continued to evolve. The incident with Emily became a pivotal moment in the school's history, a stark reminder of the complexities and dangers of modern adolescence. The school's commitment to student safety and mental health became a model for others, showcasing the importance of proactive measures and open communication. Emily graduated with honors, her courage and determination inspiring those around her. She went on to pursue a degree in psychology, driven by a desire to help others who had suffered trauma. Her journey, though fraught with pain, ultimately became one of hope and empowerment. The shadows of Jefferson High, once a source of fear and uncertainty, were transformed by the light of awareness and resilience. Emily's story, a true horror that unfolded in the quiet suburbs, served as a beacon of hope, illustrating that even in the darkest of times, the strength of the human spirit can shine through, guiding us toward a brighter, safer future.